Welcome, adjudicators, to another episode of Disputed, where two fictional characters go head-to-head armed with only their advocacy, and you will decide the outcome. Everything is Disputed. Yeah. Hoorah. 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 How you doing, my man? I am better now. <laughs> Good. <laughs> well, that's 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 positive then. So positive. I take it. <laughs> yeah, positive. Uh, oh man. So we got a great one today. You wanna you wanna you wanna you wanna start start off about who you are and then we'll kind of introduce we'll introduce ourselves. Sure. Right. What's up, blurds? Oh, let's try this again. What's up, blurds and nerds? I am Damon, father of two, husband of one, the Danny DeVito of the Disputed Podcast. <laughs> well, well, well. Thank you, Damon, and welcome, adjudicators <laughs> <laughs> and advocates. I'm Dean, head honcho of the Podscure Podsca- Podcast Network, uh, <clears throat> a co host of the Podscure Podcast. How are you now podcast and the wondering type podcast producer of the boondocks podcast. And apparently I'm the Arnold Schwarzenegger to demands Danny DeVito. So <laughs> the disputed podcast. So I, and I will be pushing all the buttons this evening in in many, many ways. So man, last episode, it was fantastic. You know what? Let's just, uh, let's. We, we had a great time. So, uh, Brian Tan, MC amazing. Uh, they brought their dispute, uh, Cato, uh, from the green Hornet and Walker, uh, from Walker, Texas Ranger. Uh, but let's, you know, let's go to the tape. How about that? it first but before before we get into it let me say uh the video uh produced by heather and keith mackey amazing go check them out uh on twitter at uh at heather mackey h-e-a-t-h-e-r-m-a-k-i-1 or on instagram at soul s-o-l f freedom 10 uh, and they make some amazing WWE 2K22 videos, uh, and even did it in, in uh, 20, the 2019. They do some awesome characters. So this was a very closely matched fight. It was, it was, you know, I I didn't know which way it was going to go because there's lots of fans on both sides. However, Cato brought it, uh, 56% to 44%, and uh, Cato wins it. So yeah, that, and also great great premiere episode what uh what did you think about that devon that was uh as tight as i would expect from an eight nine uh seeds and two legends of the game and it and their advocates brought it for him and i i would have been quite okay with either one uh going on it it, it was it was well it was a well fought match and victory for Cato. So he will get the winner of Johnny Lawrence and the number one seed Wayne from Letterkenny. Correct? Yeah. So, yeah. He, so, so whoever wins it. that one, that's, that's going to be an interesting one. So absolutely. Uh, uh, Bruce Lee versus Wayne or Johnny Lawrence. So yeah, I don't know how that's going to be, but uh, yeah. And big props to our advocates uh, for doing such a fantastic job. I'm sure we'll have Brian, uh, Brian Tan back again uh, to do another scrapper dispute soon, but, a big congrats to your boy MC Amazing for pulling it out for Cato there. So, <sighs> so, Damon, if uh, if you're ready, uh, what do you say we we bring on this dispute now? 
This episode brings disputes between two former special agents headed down different paths. One set to level the playing field and help those in need, the other set to fight international terrorists with an independent crew. Who are these icons of justice? Only two of the most dangerous crime fighters ever known to man. Luke Cobbs of the Fast and Furious franchise versus Robert slash Robin McCall, a.k.a. The Equalizer. Ah, yeah! This is going to be a great, great scrap. I, I can't wait for this to get going. So, uh, in fact, why don't we uh, just start things uh, with this right now, eh? So, uh, I'm going to bring our first guest in. You know who it is? Oh, it's our boy MC Amazing. So let's uh, big props Ev for for winning. But let's go ahead and do your intro here. So our first advocate for the evening is now a three timer here on Disputed. He hails from Dallas, Texas, and blows Texas size hubba bubba bubbles while he gulps down guava juice in mass quantities. You can call me Ev. Uh, but tonight, we will say give it up for your boy, MC Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about, baby. Yet another fantastic intro. What's going on, people? It's your boy, <laughs> MC Amazing, back again. He said, what, three times? Three time, three time, three time. <laughs> Advocate for the masses. What's going on, guys? Thanks for having me back. Man, I'm that was yeah big props to you uh so it was a great it was a great dispute you did a fantastic job um but tonight you are you're advocating for somebody else who are you advocating for today and why and again tell us what you bring to the table oh my goodness gracious today i am advocating for the big brolic luke hobbs man i mean you know what i've become very familiar with this man in the past few days let me tell you uh the equalizer is in for battle i'm not i'm not going to say much else you know i don't want to you know just go ahead and start shining immediately i gotta curtail it a little bit so i'm gonna just like let it let, but as far as what brit what i bring to the table i mean you guys know i mean you know but i'll restate it for those of you who don't right i bring a certain um, energy, you know, certain <laughs> hypeness, as well as a knowledge. You know, I like to get to know my uh, who I'm advocating for. You know, I have to know my client. I like to okay. go on a deep dive. And oh, I feel yeah. like it's important to, you know, be able to relate and sympathize, especially with a big dude who can just like, who can hold down a, a helicopter with his hand with, <laughs> with a chain and he's just sitting with a drive and like, it's, oh man, you know, L listen, man. Like I told you guys earlier, I became way more invested in the Fast and the Furious universe than I had ever thought possible. I mean, my goodness, a lot of stuff happens, you know, especially with like Dom and you know what, never mind. Like this is about Luke Hobbs tonight, and I'm like, <laughs> and I'm gonna we're gonna keep the focus on him and uh, the Equalizer. But um, yeah, I'm I'm glad to be back, and I'm ready to I'm ready to play. Excellent, excellent. So, Demond, are you ready to introduce our next advocate? I believe so, yes. Our next advocate, also returning guest, is from Seattle, Washington, but currently resides in Portland, Oregon, where she's working on a set of children's books. She's played roller derby, been a teacher, and she felt it was time to make a change and became a contract killer of tropes. <laughs> Friends call her red, Dean calls her baby girl, and you can call, call her Miss Walker if you're nasty and consenting. Ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Tia Walker. Man. Thank you, thank you, Demond. You are welcome. <laughs> how are you? Lovely. I didn't say how you're how you're looking over. I said how you how you doing? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. 
All right, enough flirting. Let's... <laughs> All right, so you you you're back. Uh, this is your second time. You were on one of our uh, one-off episodes before we uh, decided. Oh, let's have it. Let's. We had somebody had the brilliant idea of wanting to have a tournament. Um, <laughs> and who who had that idea? I don't know. Shouldn't have listened to him. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault. You started it. <laughs> I, I, I got I, I got a big mouth clap. <laughs> uh, so, Tiara, who are you advocating for this evening? Why? And we know what you bring to the table. <laughs> well, tonight I am advocating for uh, Robert McCall. He is the, uh, the protagonist of the Equalizer movies. Um, I chose to do the this this particular character, even though there was a actual vast amount of um, source material out there. There was a TV show in the 80s, there is a TV show now, and there is a movie series. Um, when I started going into this, I initially thought, well, maybe the TV series and the movies, it's the same guy. You know, they just changed it into a woman for the TV. But then I found out they're still doing movies. There's going to be another one coming out next year, and that both uh, Robin McCall and Robert McCall exist uh simultaneously so um there there is some rumors of even some crossover maybe denzel showing up on the tv show which would be just so fucking cool but <laughs> as for what i bring to the table um uh a love for denzel uh the fact that my neurodivergent ass can smell out another neurodivergent character from a million <laughs> from 100 yards away <laughs> and um i don't know my, my pretty Fair enough. <laughs> All those are accurate. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I've I've you know of course I've been here watching along with uh, catching up on you know it's funny I remember the second one more uh, than mm -hmm. I did the first one. Uh, the first though the first one was great. Uh, I like the first one better than the second one though. But yeah, I, I agree. I remembered the second one going into this way more than I remembered the first one. And yeah, and like Ev, like you, I'm I'm I was I, I was not very familiar with fast and furious franchise very much at all mm -hmm. i mean i i felt he's like you see one you kind of seen the rest i mean the first one. i'm good yeah fast yeah pretty much cars and furious cops right that's right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay well let's uh let's get into the rules here real quick so uh as as you both already know but uh just letting everybody else know else know that both both of you will get an opening statement uh, offered five minutes long uh, with a rebuttal right after for two. Yeah, you have a question, Devon? No, I'm just playing. I'm just. Oh, you, <laughs> I didn't know five, if you were raising your hand. It's okay. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five. So uh, five minutes long uh, with followed directly by a two minute rebuttal for uh, your, your uh, uh, vice advocate. <laughs> um, then. Uh, then Demond and I will ask each of you uh, questions if we have any. There may be questions from the audience, which if you are if you're on YouTube uh, and maybe on Twitch, you can you can put in in the comments and we'll we'll see them and bring them up on the screen. And then finally, each of you will get two minutes for a closing argument. Uh, you uh, we allow for bank time, so if you don't use all of your time, you can bank it for a rebuttal or for a closing statement or what have you. Um, and uh, Damon and I have the capacity and our wherewithal to extend time up to another 30 seconds just because we're good guys. So, <laughs> so I like saying um, authority just because nobody ever listens to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, we are going to start off here uh, with our advocate number one, who is Ev, Ev MC Amazing. If you are ready, sir, we're going we're gonna to bring you right up here. And oh, let's see. Oh, wrong one. I, sometimes you hit the wrong button, and you know, things just don't work out. Uh, let's do this. Here we go. Boop. Yeah, that's what we're looking for. And uh, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be doing the timer on here now because it's just easier for me to stop and restart. I feel that. <laughs> so, when you are ready, sir. Oh yeah. Give us your opening statement. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Um, ladies and gentlemen. Um, father, brother, uh, 
eccentric wild man gallivanting across the planet. You know him as Luke Hobbs. Um, what, what can you really say about this fantastic, this mountain of a man who goes out and captures the world's fiercest criminals? Uh, think for a second, right? He's already gone toe to toe with Dominic, Dominic Toretto. And as you all know, whenever Dominic Toretto starts talking about family, he's starts talking about family. He gets like a 20 <laughs> times boost to his strength level. I mean, it's ridiculous. Think about all the people he's, he's beaten soundly, right? Owen Shaw, Deckard Shaw. Hmm. Hmm. Those guys are trained, man. They're not like just, just some guys walked in off the street. They, they were trained killers. And Dominic Toretto and, and our boy Luke Hobbs went uh, head to head. Not only that, we went head to head with Deckard Shaw. And you know what Deckard Shaw had to do to not even to win the fight, to escape with his life. He had to blow up the whole room. He had to blow up the entire room to get to uh, to force a draw. Basically, I mean, this the, that's the power of Luke Hobbs. Luke Hobbs is like over here, like tussling with uh, with Deckard Shaw's uh, sister Hattie. And he's just like, oh, you know what, man? I'm just going to pick you up. I'm tired of fighting. I'm just going to hold you above my head and talk to you, like get you to talk to me nicely. You know what I mean? What? Mm. Uh, how many times does this man have to save the world? I mean, how many times has the Equalizer saved the world? Let me ask you that. Huh? How many times has the Equalizer gone out and saved the world from like a nuclear a nuclear bomb with an EMP or 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 even like something like a Idris Elba with superpowers? You want to fight Idris Elba with superpowers? Be honest. I don't want to fight Idris Elba normally without superpowers. <laughs> like I wouldn't want. Have you seen that guy with his shirt off? He's ridiculous. So no, I would not want to fight Idris Elba in any kind of way, shape, or form. And, you know, Luke Hobbs was ready to step up to the plate and take him on, even if it meant that he wasn't, he might not win. I tell you what, then taking a step further, they're like, yo, we're not even going to use guns. If you ever saw Shaw, uh, Hobbs and Shaw, they fought those whole, like basically the whole last part of the movie. They didn't use guns. It was all like traditional Samoan weapons, traditional Samoan weapons against guns. Now, let, now, granted, the guns were turned off. But that just means that everybody had to go toe to toe with him, and he gets to prove systematically how much better he is at close range combat than everybody else. That's Luke Hobbs, man. That's the like he doesn't need guns. He doesn't even need weapons, man. He himself is a living weapon. He is a living weapon. And plus, man, have you ever looked at his uh, sense with these driving cars, these big bulky cars that break through walls, smash down retainers and stuff like that? This is the power of Luke Hobbs, man. I mean, I just don't understand. I don't I don't really see what the equalizer can bring to the table, to be <laughs> honest. But I'm willing to back up a little bit and, you know, see what see, see what shakes loose. Um, um, ladies and gentlemen, I will rest my case for now. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. You're banking a minute 38. <laughs> so, uh, Tiara, if you are ready for your rebuttal. Yes. I'm going to go ahead and bring you over, and you can start now. Luke Hobbs is bad at his job. He gets into long, drawn-out fistfights with suspects he should be arresting and joining forces with those suspects when his law enforcement team is ambushed. Once they kill the new bad guys, he gives the original suspects he was, tra he was tracking a 24-hour head start. He lacks empathy for the innocent people around him, and the fact is Hobbs is the epitome of a bad cop. He gets physical with suspects when interrogating them, knowing full well that this is illegal, and any information he got from it would be tossed out of court. Luke's, Luke Hobbs is all fists and biceps and no sense. McCall would kill him before he ever got a punch thrown. And I bank the rest of my time. Oh, my, my, my. That was, uh... <laughs> <laughs> that was good. So you, you book a uh, bank a minute 17? <laughs> so, uh... Precise. Yeah. That, that I mean, was very that in was character. That was precise. Strategic... <laughs> That is, did that you is and you pro important. did you start your stopwatch before? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yes. She's like, you got you got about a minute thirty six. Did I, did I guess mode. how long it would take? I mean, he he thinks about it ahead of time, and he's like, you know what? I think it's going to take this much time, and then he All times right. himself. So let's let's do your let's do your opening now. All right. All right. Go ahead and start. Robert McCall was a highly decorated gun gunnery sergeant in the United States Marine Corps and a black ops opera uh, operative for the DIA who faked his death in order to start a new life and put his past behind him. He fell in love and married a woman who encouraged his intelligence and compassion. He tried to continue living as the person she loved after she died. However, 
When he started seeing injustice all around him, he felt he had to act. Robert McCall is a nobleman, focused on fighting injustice and righting wrongs. He hides in plain sight and helps innocent people and those who cannot help themselves. He has a strong sense of morality and gives all of those he fights a chance to do the right thing before taking action. He's in the peak of physical condition for a man of his age due to his military history and his healthy diet. He stays in shape by working at a hardware store, pushing dollies piled high with cement. He's strong enough to drive a corkscrew through a man's chin and break a man's neck. He can assess this, this situation in milliseconds and decide distance and threats faster than anyone, using the environment and objects in the room in a fight. McCall is highly skilled when, with various firearms, including pistols, shotguns, submachine guns, and even nail guns. He's a highly skilled martial artist, being particularly familiar with the Krav Maga, Br uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, boxing, and street fighting. He can wield knives with great efficiency and improvise weapons such, such as shot glasses, hammers, books, fire extinguishers, drills, shards of glass, nails, baking flour, teapots, a pair of glasses, and a credit card in a fight. McCall is highly intelligent. He's a master st strategist and is well-versed in preparation and recon. He speaks several languages fluently, including English, Russian, Spanish, Turkish, Yiddish, Arabic, and some French. McCall is also neurodivergent. He is OCD and maybe autistic. Rather than a hindrance, he uses his skills to set himself up for the best possible outcomes. What may look like compulsive lining up of items on a desk is actually him figuring out what could be used as a weapon and positioning those items so he can reach them if needed. His attention to detail assures he always knows how to get out of situations that could be dangerous. He can think of seven ways to kill you in two seconds. It doesn't matter if you're a drunken rich kid, a pimp, a government assassin, or a Russian hitman. Robert McCall will win, and he will time himself to see just how long it takes. For the record, it'll likely take less than 15 seconds. Robert McCall wants to help people. He does not do anything just for himself. Unlike Luke Hobbs, who kept stolen money for himself and blurred the lines of what side he was on. If you have a problem, McCall wants to help you, and he will use every one of his many deadly skills to make sure that the innocent people can live their lives happily. And I bank the rest of my time. All right, bank in two minutes. So you got three and a half minutes banked. Uh, that's, you know, that that was good. Um, so, E, are you, are you ready to be, to rebut? <laughs> oh, yes, yes I am. <clears throat> All right, give me a sec here and start. You know what the deal is when um, you have to spend uh, so much time thinking about all the weapons, all the things you can use in the room, how coming, bringing together a strategy in order to beat an enemy. But um, Luke Hobbs doesn't need any of that. I mean, he's already decided. He's already decided on the strategy before he's even seen what the room looks like. He's like, I'm going to go in there and I'll beat the crap out of everybody who doesn't agree with me. Uh, I mean, what more do you need? It doesn't need to be flashy. It doesn't need to be concise. It does, as long as it gets the job done. And can we, I think we can all agree that Luke Hobbs gets the job done, hell or high water, he's going to get make something happen, even when the odds are against him. I mean, come on, he's fighting fighting a, a super soldier. When is when has the equalizer done anything like that? When is the equal, uh, all right. Does the equalizer even really leave his home state like regularly like i mean like you know what i mean i mean all right you know e even if he even if he does i mean are you doing like that kind of situ putting a situation where you have to save the world not like a city block not a convenience store not your next door neighbor the world i mean how much more selfless and magnanimous can you be or to be somebody who's willing to put your life on the line for not only the people of America, but the people of the world. God bless you, Luke Hobbs, and may the devil miss you. All right, that's, that's it. <laughs> uh, oh, boy. It is hard to keep a straight face with, with some of the things that flies out of your mouth. Right? <laughs> Uh, I love I'm it. Trying. I'm trying. I'm trying to hide my Smith thing, man. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh so Demond, you 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 have a uh, you have any uh, questions for uh, E here? Okay, uh, really, the only thing I want to uh, ask about, and uh, T brought it up earlier, is what about the accusations that Luke Hobbs is a bad cop? What is your what is your response to that? 
a bad cop left. I mean, if you're used to like people like, um, you know, dilly dallying, waffling about what they're going to do, then yeah, he's a terrible cop. He's an awful cop. You know, if you're look, looking for somebody to always follow the rules, even to the detriment of everybody around them, then yeah, he's a horrible cop. Yeah, I will say it. Yeah, he's a terrible cop. But if you're looking for somebody who is willing to say, damn the rules, Let's get straight to the meat of things. Let's get this job done. If we got people that can do the job, that's why he recruits um, Dominic Toretto and his crew, right? He's like, he knows people who will get the job done. Not the people who are going to be, it's like, oh, well, these people on the right side of the law, forget all that, man. We need the job done. We don't care. Forget that stuff doesn't matter. And the final analysis, what matters is, did you get the job done or not? Like, well, I mean, th that's the whole point. He is an agent of change an agent of change, changing things to the way they need to be, like liberty and freedom and and, uh, and, and big biceps, man. That's what <laughs> Mukov stands for. Legit. Legit. All right. Oh, um, so, so T. Yes. Uh, McCall is known for really putting himself in harm's way to to help others mm -hmm. um how I, I mean what did he do to get in that way so that that may makes you impressed with more impressed with him versus hobbs in that manner well the reason why uh mccall is the way he is um i don't mean the ocd i mean the highly trained skilled killer um, and all of the other things that go along with it is because of so much time spent doing something that he really believed in and thought he was doing, you know, doing a good job. Um, when he left that job, he no longer thought of it as as noble as uh, as he had thought going into it. And it kind of changed his view on just people in in, in general. Um, when he married his wife and, you know, promised her that he would leave all of that behind, that was because he knew that that was not a life that, that he wanted. But when she died and he didn't really have anything left and all he thought that he had was his ability to make things better for the people around him and, um, kind of a... I don't want to say a death wish, but he didn't care if he lived or died. He just wanted to make things better. Um, it, you know, he's never had a chance to save anybody on like the world scale or anything like that. But he befriended a a child who was basically in sex slavery and took down an entire wing of the Russian mob to save her life. So you know, he was only looking at the micro in that he wanted to make sure that her life was better. But he realized as he went along after killing the pimp and then finding out that it was, there was so much more to this. He realized that he needed to equalize the playing field for everyone. And that these people were, were doing terrible things to a lot of people. So his his whole motto is equalizing the playing field for the little guy. And it's not big rah-rah America because he doesn't want to be known for it. He doesn't want to be seen as intimidating. He works at, at a home improvement store to stay undercover, basically, so that people don't recognize him for who he used to be. And until he starts, until he literally has to save that that shopping center, essentially, from people who are trying to find him, uh, you know, he does a really good job of of not letting average people know how scary he could be. Um, are you basically saying that he's he used to be Luke Hobbs and found his, and found the right path to go? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? He was, he, well, sort of. He he was a hired killer essentially, but he was a hired killer for a government. And, you know, he learned all of these things in the military, but he believed in the government and what he was doing. Does Hobbes necessarily believe in anything? Is it really rah-rah America or is it, 
you know, I can get the glory of taking down this this terrible thing. And oops, I accidentally pocketed the money that I found. And, you know, <laughs> so like McCall is the kind of person that will give all of his money to somebody who needs it um, instead of trying to keep it for himself. Um, when he shut down a money laundering place. Um, he didn't harm any of the people that were being forced to work there. In fact, he gave them money as they left quietly and calmly and tied up everybody for the cops to then come and find. So they, and he respects cops enough that he's going to take down, when he sees a dirty cop, he's going to take down that dirty cop. And I'm kind of on his side too i don't really believe that there are necessarily good cops and if you're going to be a really bad <laughs> cop if you're going to be a really bad cop you know you definitely don't want to cross his path not saying that that you know hobbs is a really bad cop he's just <laughs> he's not a good one <laughs> ev do you want to respond to that um yeah, like I like I said, we've already we've already gone through the whole thing. Like, yeah, Hobbs is a bad cop, in fact. But you know, but you know, the thing about it is, is that he he has to pocket money because guess what? He's got he's got a, a little one at home that he has to take care of. I mean, you got to make those kinds of you got to make choices when it comes to your family. Am I right? I mean, ask Dominic Toretto. I mean, who knows all I about guess, family? I so, guess. Family. But yeah. see, McCall <laughs> lost his family, so his community is what he has left to save. So he's doing everything he can to make sure his community is safe and saved and the people that he cares about are safe, just like what, what Hobbs is doing. Yeah, well, in Hobbs's case, he cares about the world, like everybody in the world, and that's why he <laughs> saves the world all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh demon what and i know we're, we're doing something new here with the order of of the closing arguments how are we doing this again you you had brought it up to me um about oh a, a switching the order based the, on oh, who went first. oh that, i didn't, you never responded I, I didn't know okay I, so <laughs> basically whoever whoever started the um uh the sec whoever basically advocate number two gets the last word so all right, so uh, that's how I've got it now. All right, I so I did yeah. I did do it right. So, uh, Ev, if you would like to uh, start your uh, closing argument, we'll give you two minutes, and we can add. You know, you guys got plenty of leftovers, so go ahead. Thank you very much, sir. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm back once again to give you my closing argument. I mean, what else is there to say? I mean, it's Luke Hobbs played by The Rock. I mean, like some of the spectacular things he's done. Like, did you guys see? And I think it was Fast. Fast seven, fast six, when eighty five. I think it was. I think it was sure. Seven, I think it was fast like six, maybe. Yeah, when he what's called like when he rock bottomed Deckard Shaw through a glass table. I mean, <laughs> the kind of spectacular moments that can only be done by Luke by Luke Hobbs grabbing a dude off a motorcycle while they're driving in a car and then slamming him into a wall while they're still driving. Once again, I refer, once again, holding down a helicopter with a chain with only his arms, his two <laughs> arms. This big, the, I mean, the amount of power you have to, I don't care how long, it was like a couple minutes? I mean, my God, the strength of this man. Like I said, he doesn't need a plan when he comes into the room. Matter of fact, sometimes he does have a plan. And when, it, when he does it, I mean, it's ridiculous, right? I mean, when he does have a plan, but oftentimes he doesn't need a plan because he's Luke Hobbs. He's basically the human version of the juggernaut. He doesn't need plans. <laughs> like all he needs is the right kind of backup. And that's why he's got Dominic Toretto and his crew. And then occasionally you get Deckard Shaw. Deckard Shaw's pretty good, but he's nothing, nothing standing next to the mutt that is Luke Hobbs. Just like the equalizer. Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, so, T, you're, uh, if you're ready, let's uh, give your closing argument. All right. While Luke Hobbs is beat the crap out of everyone and ask questions later, the equalizer gives them a chance to actually do the right thing before he goes in and ends whatever storyline is happening in their life. <laughs> uh, he 
uh, you asked earlier if he ever leaves his state. He actually travels all over the world. In fact, in um, he went from somebody he met in his own little state. He traveled all the way to Turkey to save a little girl from being kidnapped by her father, who didn't actually care about her, just wanted to get back at mother. So, And he had been to Turkey so many times that he actually knew pretty much everything that he needed to know going into this this interaction. Um, he is more like a traditional anarchist than what you see, usually see in a movie. He cares about his community and he will do everything he can to, to uh, defend it and make sure that it is safe. Um, he cares about the old people. In Driving for Lyft, he drives an old man to all of his appointments and doesn't say a word when the man gives him a 50 cent tip every time. Uh, you know, he helps people when he finds out that uh, someone is is heading for a tour in Iraq. He tells that person, you know, make sure you call me when you get back and I will be here to pick you up. He listens in to these people that are living their lives in the back of his car. And when he hears somebody who needs help, he does something about it. He puts out Craigslist ads. Are you look? Do you need help? Do you, are, have you found or are, are you at the end of your rope? Um, he doesn't ask for money. He doesn't ask for anything in return. He just wants his community and the people around him to be safe. And while it's very noble to care about the whole world, if your small community is not safe, saving the world isn't going to do anything for the people in your actual life. And so for that reason alone, I think that Robert McCall is the winner out of this. You're muted. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, this is... Muted. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Am I mute? I, I mute so, so you don't... <laughs> you're not over my... Anyway, uh, so yeah, this is a great, great uh, episode. I mean, the, the arguments you both made, both very valid uh, rebuttals, both very valid. <laughs> um, so it's, it's really hard. But, um, but now it is time for voting. So go vote, people. Go to disputedpod.com slash Hobbs V McCall, H O B B S V M C A M C C A L L, uh, and uh, go vote for your winner. Uh, it's uh, you know, I you know who I have to vote for, so um, <laughs> no, no nepotism, not at all. Uh, Demond, um, uh, give us a recap. What do you think? Wow, um, this was a this was a contrast. This is a contrast of styles because we have someone who cares more about who focuses on more of the micro versus someone who focuses on the macro. Someone who's more physical versus someone who's more cerebral and tactical. And we, you know, we've got and then we've got fighting for the little man versus fighting for America. <laughs> <laughs> this is another great. I. I, I I say probably say this every week and I'll say it until it's not true anymore. This was a great show. This was a <laughs> great battle. We have we have two great characters. We have two great advocates. Like it was like it, it was the verbal jousting that I was, that, that I dreamed of when we started when we first started up, uh, of this show. This yeah. was it just keeps getting better and uh, I thank you for whoever's Thank you for watching and thank you guys for participating. This you guys are fantastic. Damn right. Uh and so thank you to both of you. So before we go, we'd like uh you have uh Ev, you have anything you'd like to plug? Oh yeah, as always, you know, um thanks again for like having me on um on the disputed podcast again. It's always a privilege. I mean, like I always say, like, you know, it's um always great because you get like more associated with like a lore or like a um, genre or subject that you don't really you've not not really dipped into before and i know so much about dominic toretto and his family <laughs> and luke hobbs and owen shaw and deckard shaw and then like they have like the movie that's not even really you know what i'm not gonna go into like <laughs> just, it's a lot but um yeah um as always you know you can hit me up at um at mc underscore amazing on twitter um, same sign on uh, Instagram, MC underscore Emazing. Uh, hit me up on, uh, I go, I stream on Twitch every once in a while now. A lot of times uh, Penelope Flynn does um, the streaming on Monday, Wednesday, Friday in the mornings. But um, yeah, that's uh, uh, www.twitch.tv slash 
uh, E M A Z I N G X P. That's uh, twitch.tv slash emazing XP for the emazing experience. And um, as always, check me out on uh, TV FGC News, um, the input output podcast about fighting games and just being an enthusiastic fighting gamer, as you know, I am. Um, and uh, yeah, once again, thanks a lot for letting me come back again. I look forward to being on here again. Thank you guys very much. Thanks for being here. Tiara. Hi. Would you like to uh, sh give some shout outs to uh, things that you're doing? Sure. Um, all right. So you can find me on the, on How Are You Now? The Letter Kenny podcast. Uh, we will be doing a live table read of an episode next Friday mm -hmm. at some point. Not uh, tomorrow, but the not tomorrow, Friday next after. Friday. Yes. Um, you can also find me on uh, The Wandering Type, which is the podcast. Uh, the uh, Reacher podcast slash book club. <laughs> um, coming up soon, we'll be doing the final season of The Boondocks, which I'm really looking forward to getting that, even though we were hoping we would get a little bit more. Um, but this is what we got. Uh, and um, until my book uh, comes out, you can find me on Twitter. <laughs> well, well, you have you have a you have a Twitter for your book as well. Oh don't yes, you? Um, that that is one I actually need to like memorize. So <laughs> I don't let me open my computer again. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. Um, yeah, you can. Uh, so yeah, right now my f the I'm I'm writing a children's book series. And the first book is out in the world of publishing, hoping that somebody will pick it up and want to um, want to pay me to do more. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Pay the lady. Pay the lady. Pay, pay, pay the lady. Uh, <laughs> so. I want to retire. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, want, I would like you to be able to quit the job that you don't like. Um, okay. <laughs> So, oh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> so it's at uh, Ms. Walker's room. M S W A L K E R S R O O M. Um, you can follow any updates on that. Uh, and yeah. Yeah. So, and I'll uh, real quick, I'll give us uh, so you can find us on uh, disputedpod.com or at disputedpod. Uh, all of our shows. Uh, you can find uh, that that we do for Podskier Podcast Network. You can find on podskier.com, uh, and it will have all of our shows on there that you can go check out, including the ones that TR and I are both on, um, and this one that Demond and I are on, and uh, a number of things like that. So, um, uh, yeah, the uh, we we need to get back to recording uh, our the way the wandering type, so we can get to our next episode of Jack Reacher, because. Mm -hmm. um, He's going to be scrapping in about here, uh, here pretty soon. So yeah, we should, I think we're hopefully recording that in the next few days so yeah. that can get out into the world. Yes. So, uh, Demond, um, how about you, uh, bring us up to what's happening next here? Ah, our next scheduled battle, which is, which will be in what? Two weeks, two weeks from today, two, two weeks. weeks, two weeks, <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> Will be Jason Bourne of Ooh. the Bourne franchise versus Frank Martin, aka the Transporter. Transporter. Oh, that's gonna be a good one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. All these are so good. I, you know, these. Every, you never know who's gonna win the battle. I mean, I know a lot of folks were really hyped about Chuck Norris mm -hmm. and wanted to see. Uh, I, I've heard a number of couple people uh, say that they wanted to see Wayne fight Chuck Norris. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> because. If uh, we may have to, uh, we may if we may have to schedule that one after this tournament's over because if they don't have, they don't <laughs> eat. so I wouldn't mind hearing that myself. Yeah, that would be good. Um, yeah, so I, yeah, I'm looking forward to all these. So yeah, it looks like uh, so and, and something that that I I found I posted about this the other day. We watched the uh, we watched the pilot episode of The Equalizer 1985. <laughs> Oh, wow. oh my goodness. And yeah. you know who the equalizer's son in that was? Who? Johnny Lawrence. <laughs> really? <laughs> playing <laughs> Zabka. Violin. Playing a violin. Yeah. It, it in was, between the Karate Kid movies. Yeah. In between in between Karate Kid one and two. He was he, he played the equalizer's son. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's fantastic. Uh, also, so. 1985 cop shows are really fucking ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, yeah. It was it was 
very it was so bad it was so bad <laughs> i mean now and i will i will say that you know the the, the storylines are rather pro progressive honestly for in my opinion for the 80s but... yeah i mean but it, you know it was it was an old you know instead of a an old black guy it was an old white guy mm -hmm. uh <laughs> and uh but yeah. but yeah he still and he, he was more it was definitely more the intellectual with him yeah like that was not with denzel he is both a physical fighter and using his intellect whereas i think the original was more intellect and the queen latifah one i haven't watched more than just the first season yet so i don't know second season or anything but um you know she was she was she's also both in definitely yeah um she can fight yeah amazing. <laughs> she can fight me can... <laughs> we all know all what you would like time. we all know, we all know. <laughs> yeah yeah all right so um yeah so i guess then uh let's see anything oh yeah actually let me uh bring up more th so we got merch here disputed.com slash merch uh That's and insane. yeah so you can buy we got t-shirts and lots of lots of things uh also um you can uh, find everything else we have at disputedpod.com slash links so um Devon, you got anything else you uh, you'd like to bring up i do not uh, make sure you check out Damon does i hmm. will have another episode coming out next week yeah. and i believe that oh and in the library the uh the library podcast which is about local indiana um history but it's still interesting uh last month we did the howard steamboat museum which supplied uh steamboats and warships to world war ii so for my little uh hometown so it's pretty cool stuff but yeah Excellent. that's what i'm up to now beautiful Ooh. well well uh we will see you uh next time so until next time i'm Damon. i'm dean and remember everything, everything is disputed thank you so much for joining us today we hope you enjoyed the episode and that you will go vote for your winner we give a huge huge thanks to our guests and their advocacy for their characters and finally we'd like to thank the artists who created the music that helps make our show so great we've got hard fight by tajirages fight club by evil bear boris fight makes right by atake and this party sucks by done with fish you can find all of them on freemusicarchive.org. Thanks.